All right, I'm here with uh, Phil and your, what's your call sign? BK2 BDF. K2 BDF? Yep. Excellent. And you're going to show us a really neat home built uh, spectrum analyzer. Spectrum analyzer. Tell us all about it. Very, very long time ago, <laughs> when the radio club was first building the two meter repeater, mm -hmm. we were having terrible trouble getting the cavities working. Right. And we had very limited access to uh, RF test equipment. Mm -hmm. I worked in a RF laboratory and had access to a spectrum analyzer. Yep. And I just wish I had one at home. Right. So I decided there was no way I was ever going to be able to afford mm -hmm. a Hewlett Packard spectrum analyzer in those days. Yep. Late 70s, early 80s. So I decided to build one. Excellent. All right. And, uh, this, and this is and, the result. And this is it. Wow. This, uh, this device has been used to get the cavities working for the, uh, the original two meter repeater for the radio club. Mm -hmm. And several times since uh, for EMC testing of uh, various pieces of commercial equipment. Right. Uh, probably the, the most recent and valuable was uh, the traffic light controller I've been working on for many years. Had a, a leakage of 160 meg signal out, oh. of, out of the microprocessors. Right, and you were able to track that down? We, using, uh, we took the, we took the, tra the traffic light controller up to Colo, to the open air test site. Yep. They failed it. <laughs> and uh, they said that signal's got to go down about 10 dBs. Yep. I brought it home and set up the traffic light controller in my carport. Used the spectrum analyzer with a dipole antenna mm -hmm. and went through board by board till I found where the problem was. Nice. And uh, fixed it, went back to Colo and got it passed. All right. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's great. Um, all right, so tell us how it, uh, tell us, explain all the sections in here and uh, tell us how a homebrew spectrum analyzer works. Well, a, a spectrum analyzer is really just a radio receiver. Mm -hmm where the, the last detector stage is a logarithmic amplifier instead of a linear voice detector. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's very much like an AM receiver. There's, uh, there's, no, uh, there's no gain controls. It just runs flat out all the time. But the, the last stage, the detector, which is the, this last section here, yep. is a logarithmic amplifier. Right. That just takes a, a 10.7 meg signal and rectifies it like an AM detector. Mm -hmm. But it's set up so that the, the output of the detector is logarithmically proportional to the input. So it, it has, a, we were working out before, it has about 70 dBs of gain. Mm -hmm. So 60 dBs is a thousand times in voltage. Yep. Another 10 is another three. So about 3,000 times in voltage and that equates to the height of my screen. Mm -hmm. So these these signals here, that, that's about 40 dBs down from, right. from the top of the screen. So the noise floor is what, minus 70 or thereabouts is it? Yeah, about, about 70. Yep. Not sure where the other signals are from. <laughs> and what uh, sweep range are we looking at there at the moment? That's that's the zero mark. Oh right, okay. Up yep. to two hundred megs. Two hundred megs. So this is a two hundred. About it, it, it tops out at about two hundred yeah. megs. Right. Some somewhere here will be the page and transfer. There's uh, there's somebody transmitting. Right. Somebody around us. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's got a transmitter around here, like on his belt there. Who's got a handheld? <laughs> can you key up your handheld? Can you, handheld. Can you just key up your handheld? Yeah. Key it. Any <laughs> frequency? Here we go. And, and all the digital. And okay, here we go. Oh, there we go. Yeah, Look at right. that. Wow. Oh, you've <laughs> yeah. got to be kidding. <laughs> You're allowed on the air with that. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> wow. Right, thanks, Ben. <laughs> All right. Oh, he might have momentarily overloaded the front end. <laughs> right. But anyway, that was that was him there. Yep. Yep. So that, that's 146 megs about there somewhere. Right. That'll that'll be the 147 meg paging transmitters. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not sure where 88 to 108 has gone. There was a. 
Well, it's, that's all the FM broadcast transmitters in there. Oh, it's on narrow, that's why I can't see it. Oh, there they are all there. Ah, there they are, they're the FM transmitters. Yep. They're all the right. local FM stations. So, 88 to 108 meg. Yep. That's them. Spot on. So can you tell us about all the sections, starting from the antenna input? Well, the antenna input. Yep. Comes down into front end mixer. Yep. Now the mixer takes the RF signal, mixes it with the voltage controlled oscillator. And that, that produces a 205 meg IF. Right. This, this receiver actually converts up rather than converts yeah. down like a traditional receiver. This can only work this way. You, right, okay. You, because we're trying to churn everywhere from, from zero frequency to 200 megs, mm -hmm. You've got to take that and convert it up to, and a, convert it up, to up an IF that's higher than, than, than the signals you're trying to receive. Of yep. So the, the, the first filter here mm -hmm. is it, it's a, it's somewhere around 205 megs. Right. That comes down into homemade double balanced diode mixer. That does look like yeah. a double balanced mixer. You can see yeah. the four yeah. diodes yeah. in there. Yeah, and the little toroids. And the little toroids, because that's all that's in a uh, double balanced mixer. Yep. So this, this section here is just a crystal oscillator and multiplier. Yep. And that, that's mixing that 200 megs down to about 50 megs. Right. The, the frequencies are not terribly important and are based, are based on what crystals I had in my junk box at the time. <laughs> okay. The, the whole yep. thing works that way. It's, right. Uh, so just a, a filter and then a, a bandpass filter at, mm -hmm. at, I'll say, 56 megs. Right. And then another crystal oscillator. No, another double balanced mixer, mm -hmm. and that that mixes down to 10.7 megs out through uh, yeah through that coax into into here, mm -hmm. and this is just a, a 10.7 meg uh, IF amplifier, right. um, ceramic bandpass filter. There it is. Yeah, I can see. Then it it comes through into this section, and then it splits two ways with with a diode switch. It either goes straight through. For, for wide band, wide band being 250 kilohertz, yep. or it goes across through those crystal filters for narrow band, which is 15 kilohertz. And that's the switch on the front. That's this one here, narrow wide. Wide and, wide and narrow band, yep. Uh, then just into some more amplifiers, which then feeds back into that logarithmic amplifier. At the end, yep. And, and that's the, our final output. Yeah, the output of the logarithmic amplifier comes out into the crow. Yep. As the as the vertical input or video input to the crow. The the oscillator is actually being swept from the oscilloscope, the, the oh. horizontal time base. Oh the hor you're taking the horizontal time base out. Out. Ah. Fed back into ah, into this right. amplifier. Nice. And that, that drives the yep. voltage control oscillator. <laughs> Got it. So that the so that it can synchronize with the frequency is actually being swept swept on the with with the yeah uh, very the clever yep. very clever oh, well, but that's how spectrum yeah, analyzers yeah, have well, always yeah but to integrate it with a mm. scope like that is yeah yeah, yeah it's neat but yeah I could afford to buy the scope but, <laughs> right. but not a spectrum analyzer <laughs> got it and these are all uh, hand wound inductors yeah little hand wound chokes. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the thing's full of hand wound coils. Yep. Nice. It's all built on the, the base is a piece of little print circuit board. Yep. And then copper and the, yep. copper shield. Shield in around. Sold it in on, on top of it. Yep. And you don't need to uh, shield the tops of them. Uh well there's oh, the. Oh well, okay, you've got shielded plates. The, okay. Yep. The lids. No yep. thanks. And not all, not all the boxes ever got shielded. Yeah, that, right. that was it. Okay. <laughs> so the performance is still fairly adequate even without the shield. Yeah. On. Uh, we we were actually looking at a signal before. Um, oh yeah. There we go. Oh. <laughs> that that is both that one and that one. I, that's that's probably the crystal, and that's. Yep, that looks like feeding back. So there's 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 picking up near the crystal. Yep. So that. Uh, but anyway, they, they they look like they're double the frequency to me. Mm -hmm. So that's the uh, that's the second local oscillator being yep. being picked up by the system itself. 
got it. But if you if you disconnect the antenna completely and put the shields on, that's your noise floor. Yeah, that's not. No, there's there's not there's not much left. Yeah. And yeah, you know, that could actually be a signal. It, it could be sneaking in. Yeah. Yeah. There's a there's a couple down here, but yeah, there's there's not much there until you put the antenna on. Sure. <clears throat> Very nice. When I when I connect the spectrum analyzer up to my beam, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm down at Beacon Hill. Yep. Down in the gully. I can I can get the receiver about S9. Mm -hmm. I can put the spectrum analyzer on the beam, key up the repeater, and actually see the the repeater come back. That. You know, right. it just pops up here as a. Yep. It's it's only just popping out of the noise, but Got it. that's that's the sort of sensitivity that the device has. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't go down to you know, microvolts like a normal right. uh, ham radio would. Um, not not sure what the yeah you know, what the smaller signal is, but yeah, ten or twenty microvolts yep. probably. Something like that. Uh, so would you, if you're building a spectrum a discrete spectrum analyzer, would you do it the same now? Or uh, would you a similar style? Pretty, pretty much. Yeah, uh, similar components. Yeah. Any, when, I, yeah. when I first looked at it, the voltage control oscillator was always going to be a problem. Right. And I, I rang up, um, I won't say who. <laughs> okay. The place up at Hornsby that sells all the fancy RF equipment uh -huh. from uh, mini circuits. Right. And I priced what's called a YIG oscillator, Y I G. Now mm -hmm. it's an acronym for something, and I can't remember what it is. A YIG oscillator is a magnetically tuned sphere oscillator. Nice. And it's the heart of a real spectrum analyzer. Mm -hmm. And I wanted one that tuned, you know, 2,000 to 3,000 megs. Yep. And it was two and a half thousand dollars. Two and a half thousand dollars. This was back when? Uh, late, <laughs> yeah, long, long late time 70s, ago. Early, early 80s. Late 70s, early 80s. <laughs> yep. Um, no, there's just no way I was going to spend that much money on a, on a little oscillator in a box. Well, nowadays everyone's doing it with a software-defined radio. <clears throat> these days, it's just not the same, is it? Yeah, it's not. It's not the same. Uh, there was uh, there was some spectrum analyzer kits that came out years mm -hmm. after this, where they actually used a TV tuner. I remember the that electronically tuned yep. TV tuner, mm -hmm. not not turret tuners. Yep. But they they had enough range that yeah you could build a half reasonable spectrum analyzer out of a, okay. a TV tuner. Right, but would it have a decent noise floor in it? Well, you had to build all the back end of it. Yeah, uh, right. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, I, but yeah, seven hundred dollars you can buy a spectrum analyzer that works better than this yeah, today. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yep. But still, that is very nice. Um, uh, <clears throat> Sort of uh, dead bug style construction, or as the Yanks call it, man Manhattan style construction, and uh, it's just beautiful. Phil, that yeah, is awesome. Thank you. Yeah, well done. Nice. Thank good. you very much. You're welcome.